It's the blue eyes for me. It's the Ferrari for me. Mm, no. It's the Super Kicks t-shirt for me. Yes, guys, I'm back with some more Super Kicks related stuff. Everyone knows that I love Super Kicks and I only kind of tackle things and I put my, I guess my, oh, this sounds very egotistical of me, but put my name on things that I truly love. Super Kicks is one of those things. We know the people behind Super Kicks and we know they're constantly trying to create new things and new designs and as you can see, as you see on the screen right now, a brand new kind of redesigned, easier to navigate website. And there's some stuff on sale, like some sweatshirts and all of that kind of stuff. Of course, you know, if you use the code Josh00, you can get free shipping. You just got to go to superkicks.com. That's S-P-R-K-I-X.com. You get some free shipping site-wide, completely anywhere in the world. If you want to get some stuff like some, some sweatshirts or a cool gold shirt or just you know, the tr what I like to call the traditional super kick shirt, that, that one you see on the screen right now. All different kinds of stuff, some hoodies and some beanies and some different kinds of wrestler designs and podcasters and all this kind of cool stuff. I love super kicks. I'm going to keep talking about super kicks because I'm very passionate about things that I put my name against. And, and this is one of those things. It's like, okay, you like me, maybe you'll love super kicks. You'll find something you love, feel confident, feel fresh, feel trendy kind of everything it just kind of fits with anything I, I I'm a believer in to feel confident you have to look confident and this is the kind of stuff I feel confident in it makes me feel confident that I can take on the world I feel like I, I I get in with today's society all that kind of cool stuff so if you go to superkicks.com that's s-p-r-k-i-x.com enter the code josh double zero you get yourself some free shipping grab something you love I know you will and then people will be saying it's the Super Kicks t-shirt for me. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Are We Recording Yet? Yeah, I hope everyone is having a good day, morning, night, whatever time it is, whenever you clicked on this video or audio feed, it is pretty cool to kind of let this show kind of take a mind of its own in these last few weeks, in these opening weeks. It, it is, it's really cool. It's kind of just carving its own path and, and doing its own thing. And today is no exception. I've got a huge interview with, um, with Callum of the Super Kicks of Ringsiders Wrestling we talk about a lot of stuff. We really kind of, this is the first episode to really go really deep into things. And it's really, really cool. It's a really cool conversation. We talk about a little bit of everything. So um, as you know, this, find out what we talk about when you kind of go into this 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 chat. Just go in with kind of open ears and you'll be good. It's a really, really fun conversation. So I won't, I won't waste any more time. Um, of course, the only thing I, I left to say is that if you want to follow me on socials, all my links are in the description below, as well as my guest links, and Josh Robinson double zero pretty much across the board. The only thing that I really need to promote this week is the fact that um, I know my Twitch streams have been a little bit up and down. They go completely back to normal starting next week um, as we go into the Christmas season, and now that I'm kind of um, at least in time of recording this, I am um, kind of back in kind of lockdown in a sense so um that's super great <laughs> it's just super great um so yeah it's it's pretty it's pretty cool but you've heard last week's episode and how great it was and um all of that love and support is really appreciated so keep the ball rolling here keep it moving keep it going you know it's uh it's it's cool it's cool so um yes twitch.tv forward slash josh robinson double zero where I put most of my kind of energy into is my Twitch stuff. So without any further ado, here is the chat with the one and only Callum of Superkicks and Ringsiders Wrestling. Enjoy everyone. Okay, so you heard in my intro, everybody, who I have here today. Um, it's Believe it or not, it's the first time we're actually ever speaking. We've just had a little bit of a tiny pre-chat about pandemic life because we don't want to talk about that too much. Like, let's, let's be honest. Everyone's sick of hearing about the pandemic. Um, so we're not going to touch on that too much, but it is tradition on any of the stuff that I do to let my guests introduce themselves. You see them here on the screen if you are watching on YouTube, but um, introduce yourself to the listeners, the watchers, whatever you want to call them. God, I've never had to introduce myself before. Usually Jamie introduces me. 
So the floor is yours. Uh, Look at this big boy shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I usually have someone do this for me, but uh, yeah, I <laughs> I'm Callum, also known as Hooch McGraw on Twitter, because I don't like to use my real name on most things, so I just use some kind of gimmick name. Um, I run Ringsiders Wrestling. You've probably not heard of us before. Don't worry, not many people have. And I also run Super Kicks, which is way cooler than Ringsiders. Look at that in the yeah, corner see, right look there. That. Look at that. Super I got it kicks. on display. It's always there for my Twitch streams and stuff like it's, that. It's almost like you're an affiliate of the company. Ah. Oh. Oh, we'll have to we'll have to talk off screen anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, it is we, the, it's the first time we're ever chatting, which is crazy because I it's mental, I feel, isn't it? It's like being yeah, I, a, oh god, it's been years? a while. Two, I About think two or two or something three years. like that. Feels like a lifetime. But we're always chatting on Twitter and stuff like that, and we just never kind of just cross paths to do anything. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I I know we said earlier and I gave my reasons. I don't usually speak to you, I don't usually do <laughs> guest appearances on podcasts because I, I barely have time to do our own let alone yeah. going over it. but when you said you were doing this show I was like yeah I want to talk to Josh for an hour about random crap in the world yeah. I mean we've already got rid of the pandemic stuff, stuff before but I'm sure there's plenty more to talk about Josh I'm looking forward to this I, I'm sure there is you will let's start off with 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 super kicks because I'm kind of intrigued by this story and and why this come along is this something that you've been like planning for so long oh. or is this just kind of something that's just kind of happened with pandemic life and stuff like that and having a little probably a little bit extra time on your hand Josh I wish there was a good story behind this <laughs> Um, I went to stay at Jamie's house and uh, we were just watching UFO documentaries like we do. Uh, we're both huge conspiracy nuts. We like our Ooh. UFOs, ghost conspiracies. So we we're just watching TV, um, chilling out. And I was just messing around on um, Adobe XD. And I was like, oh, I like that font. That's nice. Um, mm. And I typed in super kicks, but I actually spelt like super kicks. I was like, oh, that could look good as a logo for something i don't know what so i changed it to sprkix and i was like yeah that'll do uh now i need it to be a logo for something so i just used it originally for the logo for my design business so super kicks 2 is what i use for doing graphics and videos for wrestling promotions and then i thought oh, i'll see what it looks like on a t-shirt because it looks like a logo you know that could look good on a t-shirt it did and by the end of that night, I'd already set up the store and everything, got the domain name, superkicks.com, um, got the products in the store, showed Jamie, and I was like, this is what we're doing now. And he's like, all right, cool. <laughs> um, and then it just became a store. Now I barely do it for graphics. So I wish there was a good story. It's literally that's, just because I was bored. And I don't know. That sounds like a good story to me. It's just kind of, it's, I it's like stories really that are kind of spontaneous it's just like it just it's happened spontaneous definitely but That's it's not really the story feel free like, to use that it's a spontaneous story it's not a boring story. i like that it, it's not really the story you get from like an elon musk or something you, oh how did you start spacex you know yeah. oh well blah 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 me i'm just like i was bored watching conspiracies <laughs> with jamie and i thought that font looked nice and now it's a store um but the, the idea behind it though is if I'm going to do a wrestling store, I don't want to do t-shirts that are so obnoxiously wrestling. Like, mm -hmm. I, I like streetwear. I like it to yeah. be subtle and minimal. Mm -hmm. That's just me to a T. Um, so if I'm going to do wrestling t-shirts, wrestling merchandise, I want it to be subtle. I want you to be able to wear it in the street, at mm -hmm. home, on a night out. And I think that's what we're going for at the moment. Like, yep. nice, subtle wrestling designs. The one that we've got that's the least subtle is the Barry Horowitz t-shirt, yep. which is Horowitz wins with a big obnoxious picture of Barry Horowitz <laughs> in, the, in the middle. <laughs> but I like that one slide because it's Barry actually liked it. So I was like for Barry and my friend Rivers, who was a huge, huge Barry Horowitz fan. It, I thought I can let this one slide. That's the only t-shirt we'll ever have, which is a typical wrestling t-shirt. Yep. But <laughs> Yeah, that's all I wanted to do. Just make it nice, simple stuff. And like that T-shirt you've got in the background, Josh, it's hopefully you like it. I um, do. I mean, I have it on display just for streaming purposes and stuff like that, but they're comfy and they, this isn't, I'm not, I'll, I'll speak in an unbiasedly, in an unbiasedly way, not just because I am an affiliate of, of you guys, but 
it, something I do like about it is that for someone who is in their mid twenties, I like to look, I guess, you know, I'm wearing a lot of stuff that kind of society is wearing, I guess, or society is yeah. telling me to wear. That's a different topic for a different day, but it's, it's very much, it kind of, I mean this in a good way, it blends in. It blends yeah, in with the kind of everything else that's going on. And if, I'm so glad you said that. You know, that you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, yeah. if you know it's wrestling, you know it's wrestling. But if not, it's just a it's just a t-shirt that got a cool it's just a, a logo of a of a design company. So the that's what I kind of like about from, it. The only issue we've had from non-wrestling fans is how do you pronounce it? Yeah. Because there's been we've got a a billboard in the shopping center in Hull. Um mm-hmm. I seen that. That was that, so cool, by the way. I was like, man, oh my God, look at you guys. That was a favor from a friend who actually works there. And he's like, I can get you a billboard in there if you want it. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. I, I was expecting like a a tiny little TV mm-hmm. size billboard. And he sent me a picture of it. I haven't seen it in person yet, but he sent me a picture. And he was like, it's about a hundred foot. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? And I was like, that's not 100 foot, but it's about 50, and that's still massive. So it's, we've had a bit of interest from people, like casual people, uh, non wrestling fans. And the first question is always, how do you pronounce it? And I'm like, well, that's a good point. You wouldn't know it's super kicks unless you knew what a super kick was. Mm-hmm. And they're like, is it S P R K I X, S P R kicks, Spr kicks? And I'm like, well, Oh, is, God, I guess in, in a way, I kind of <laughs> like stuff like that. It's like, it's whatever you want it to be, in my, in that's my opinion. Gosh, that's, that's a great answer. Do you I like working, that. Do you want to sure. work in PR? Sure, why not? Um, <laughs> give, give me something else to do. Um, <laughs> at the time of recording, I've gone back into a, a slight version of lockdown. So give me, give me, a, give me anything to do. I'm bored. Um, <laughs> hey, look, spontaneous. I, I'm a spontaneous person. Um, but yeah, it's just something that... I, I feel like with non-wrestling fans, I've worn that shirt in public before and there's not a lot of wrestling people around here and I've got compliments on it. So there you go. There's been a couple of people that have said, that's a cool shirt. And I'm just like, okay, cool. You don't know anything about wrestling. You don't have to know what's going on in the world of professional wrestling to know exactly. what this is. And it's probably best they don't, Josh. <laughs> I agree. Um, I mean, anything can change in the time that this comes out in a few weeks when we're recording, but um, wrestling is a bit stinky and... Um, I won't air it out on here, but you've seen, everyone knows, everyone who follows me on Twitter knows my kind yeah. of wrestling at the moment. And that's coming from someone who is, my whole heart is wrestling. My whole heart is wrestling. I just can't, morals have changed for me in the last year or so. And I'm just, um, it's, it's a bit stinky at the moment. I'll just put it like that. It, but, it is, yeah. like you said before, it, you really have to leave your morals at the door at the moment to be a wrestling fan. And that really hurts because I like to think I've got good morals. Mm -hmm. But then as I'm watching wrestling, I'm like, oh, man, how can I actually support this company? And I like to think in my head, I'm not supporting the company. I'm supporting these talented individuals. Agreed. And even that's hard to do because you don't know which individuals you can trust. (laughs) So... I like to think I've got a good judge of character and I will support the wrestlers that yeah. I can support, but not the company because mm-hmm. the company is morally bankrupt mm-hmm. and I cannot endorse that in the slightest. I'm sure I'm you the feel same. the same. I'm the same. The, the company, WWE as a whole is um just, it's, it's killing me because I've flown that flag for so long when everyone else trashes it. I'm like, I love WWE. I always have, it's my yep, number one thing. And I still wrestling will always have a place in my heart, whether I stop watching, whether I continue to watch is, is neither here nor there, but um, the talent I love and the in-ring product is something that will always draw me in. And I think it will always be like there and a part of me and I'm wanting to kind of be like, Ooh, do I watch this for the talent? Can I watch this because of just other reasons, but the company as a whole, the industry as a whole, it's not just exclusive to WWE everybody. And that's not me being a typical WWE person and defending them because they're trash. But the whole industry is just is just littered with so much ugliness and it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. If if anything, this year has just exposed it. And not that I'm glad any of it happened, but I am in a sense relieved to see like, okay, I know who I need to spend my time on and who I not. And I'll always support the talent, no matter the whether I'm watching wrestling or not. I'll always support their outside endeavors. I'll always kind of pop in and be like, okay, I'm, I'm glad for this person, happy for this person's success. Yeah. And whether I do continue, you know, 
listen, it could be a week and I could be like, I, I miss wrestling. I miss watching wrestling. It's been a part of me for 20 years. I need to yeah. watch wrestling and I'm still watching old stuff and I'm still playing a lot of old games. That'll always be oh. a part of me, but um, it's just hard to kind of continue that kind of, I you know, stamping that flag in and being like, oh, wrestling is so great when it's just like, it's so ugly. Gosh, and that's one thing I've always admired about yourself is you've always flown the flag. Like mm. when there's been people on Twitter who have been like, why do you watch WWE? You should be watching New Japan or AEW. You've always said and stuck up for the talent in WWE, not always the company, no, but no, you've no, always never. said how not good long. the talent is. <laughs> and, you know, it's don't be ashamed to be a fan of WWE no. because so many people will make you feel like crap for being a fan of WWE because... Oh, yeah. They feel like ha you can if you're a wrestling fan, you have to watch AEW or you have to watch every single night of Dominion and Wrestle Kingdom in New Japan. And, you know, like you can't be a real wrestling fan if you don't watch New oh, Japan. Oh, I've heard that before. I've heard that before. Right? It's such an elitist attitude. And I, I hate any type of elitism. Like if you you could be the most casual fan and watch one wrestling match every month in WWE and you're still a wrestling fan. It, nobody can tell you you're not. So I agree. It, I agree completely. It, I just don't get that mentality. But you've I love I love wrestling as a whole. Like I've always been like, and I always will, even when I'm, uh, you know, opposed to the morals of companies and the just talent, the, some of the talent in Skype, the uh, scumbags. I always love wrestling, and I always still will always say I love wrestling. I love all wrestling, and I've always been open to being like, what's what's what. But WWE is, hey, at the end of the day, WWE is what got everybody into wrestling. For the most yeah. part, we all watched it at some stage. We all loved it. We were like, oh, I remember this moment in 2002 and, and, and 2000, blah, 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 blah. And now everyone's just suddenly like, I understand it. Don't, don't get me wrong. I understand where people are coming from because it isn't at its best. But wrestling as a whole, I don't think is, is at its, is at its no. best. You can say what you will about AEW coming into the game and New Japan and they're doing great things. Correct. But I just think the industry as a whole, it's not, it's not like it's booming. It's not like every single person is talking about wrestling as, you know, you hear in the in just in conversations you hear to people talking about ufc or something like that it's not the yes. same it's not the same and it never will be again i don't think no you you're completely right you took the words out of my mouth it we won't ever have a global boom period again no. we'll have boom periods within the industry like exactly. i feel like post lockdown i feel like we are heading to a boom period mm -hmm. there'll be a huge crowd of people wanting to go to live events exactly the, the next wrestlemania is going to do huge numbers like oh, if absolutely. it's an actual in-person event huge numbers mm. um there'll be more people streaming the independence because they can't go to these events mm -hmm. so there'll be more people buying them on fight tv and indie wrestling tv so the companies are the, the industry as a whole can do well but you're never going to have it again where you've got you know you go to the pub and you overhear somebody talking about wrestling or you go up to someone on the street and say, do you know who Tyler Breeze is? And they're like, oh, of course I know who Tyler Breeze is. Okay. Um, you know, it's never going to be like that again. So no. that's not much on Tyler Breeze. I love it. But, <laughs> Me too. But Unfortunately, wrestling isn't era, cool. Wrestling yeah. isn't cool anymore. It doesn't have that's it kind of, cool. it's like, oh, like you got to kind of, for me, I, it's a little different now, I guess, in the sense of like the last couple of years of creating content around wrestling and people know who I am and they know that I like wrestling. But beforehand, I'd be like, can I talk to this person about wrestling or are they going to be like, what are you watching that for? It was kind of like that kind of hidden thing with if you met someone new and they like mentioned it, you're like, oh, you like wrestling too. Okay, let's get on this ship together and kind of set sail. But yeah. it's not cool to like rest. It never will be. It's just how it, it never we always be. fight that fight yeah. of like wrestling is cool. Come on, come watch. But then stuff like this happens that has been happening all year. With it's cool to and, wrestling like, fans. Wrestling fans think mm. wrestling is cool. Anybody mm. outside of that bubble just looks at us and goes, what are they watching? Yeah. Yeah, it's, they're like, it smells the, like poo. Like, it's just not cool. Really. You don't want to Yeah, and right. they don't want anything to do with it. Yeah. And to a, an extent, I can see why. Because you, <laughs> when you grow up, you either stick with wrestling or you never watch it again. There's mm -hmm. no in-between. Mm -hmm. And the people who stick with it, they'll love it for the rest of their lives, potentially. Like you said, even if you don't watch it, you'll still love wrestling. Oh, absolutely. It's just absolutely. you can't support it. Like, you either love it or you hate it. It's yeah. like uh, Vegemite. Is that what you guys call look at, it? Look at this. Look at this pandering to Australians <laughs> right now. I mean, Vegemite is, it, is, is Vegemite? It, it, it's Vegemite and it's fantastic. But anyone outside of this damn country thinks it's 
completely terrible, which I understand. It's Marmite. For a start, it's Marmite. <laughs> and secondly, it's the greatest thing you can put on toast. Listen, okay, so Marmite and Vegemite, from my understanding, are similar. Or they're probably pretty much the same thing. But I've never had Marmite because I'm in Australia and um, I'm sure it's here. I think it is here. I would assume it would be. But um, it's like, if for anyone that doesn't know what Vegemite is at this point, I've talked about it before, but it's like, it's yeast. It's a yeast extract and it's very salty and it's bitter. And I don't personally like a lot on my toast. I have like butter and then a little smear yes. and then I eat it. That's how I have That's Vegemite. It. Lots of butter yep. and a little bit of Vegemite on top. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're good to um, go. But you know, it's, I see some people like it's thick and I'm like, Oh, no, no. But like, just, I see Americans eat it with a spoon and I'm like, you don't eat that with a spoon. I wouldn't like it on a spoon. It'd be terrible. Wait, who, eat, who eats it with a spoon? Have you not seen? So, okay. So say like a YouTube video of it's like Americans trying British food or Americans trying Australian food. They get like, you know how you get like, well, I don't know about Marmite, but you didn't like when you um, are international, you can get Vegemite in like a little squeeze tube and you can like squeeze it and they put right. it on a spoon and they put it in their mouth. I'm like, that's the worst way you can eat that. That's not that, it's very salty. It, it, you use it to go on something or as like an addition to something you don't, mm-hmm. it's not the meal. You, you can't just eat Vegemite or Marmite. No. Oh man. Did you know, like, it's so weird to me though, because I was like, there's other ways you can use Vegemite and it's not just to eat. You can clean your toilet with it. It can get rust off of cars. Really? And like, I'm like, I put that in my body. I don't know if I should really be yeah, that's, eating That's a it. really good point. If it can eat away rust. Rust, yep. It can eat away at your organs, surely. Mm-hmm. Like, um, yeah, it cleans toilets. Like, you, if you put it, like, in Australian terms, and I've seen this in an actual article, it said, put some straight down your loo and you'll get a sparkly loo, sparklier than you've ever had it before. So I'm like, I have tested it. It does actually clean a toilet, which is really alarming that I've had that pretty much every day, all of my life. Um, I know what I'm doing today. I, clean I, yeah, clean I, your I, toilet. It's only 20 past 11 here. Like I, I've still got plenty of time. I'm going to yeah. clean the house and pour half a tub of Marmite down the toilet. Well, who knows if Marmite will work though. Maybe it's a Vegemite thing. Maybe there's something in Vegemite yeah. that'll make it work. We can find out. We can do the science, <laughs> Josh. You, you've tried Vegemite. I'll try Marmite. We'll do this again in the future and relay our results. Yeah, we'll like, we'll, yeah, we'll come back round two and it will be like, tell me, how clean is your toilet? <laughs> <laughs> what an episode. That's going to get me I know. Yeah. I, my views will just go up through the roof. Yeah. <laughs> um, it is, it is crazy. How do you feel? I know this is, I know content in, in general, like there's such a stigma around like talking about your numbers and talking about like, oh, this, this video did this many views and this video did this many views, or I didn't get many things on this. Um, I personally don't see that as like bragging from people. I'm like, they're putting their heart and soul into something. Yeah, man, I'd be I... posting like, if I got a thousand views on a video, I'd be, oh my God, I got a thousand. Thank you so much. I mean, there's different ways. Don't be a a dick about it and be like oh my god look at me i'm so great like i can get a thousand views in my video but like i know there's like people like oh i don't know if i could post how many people showed up to my stream or something like that I'm like do you no problem but i know for me i like posts like that like i got my first pay- payout from twitch a couple of days ago and i was yeah, like congratulations, Holy shit, by the way. thank you so That's much awesome but that wasn't like a, I had to put up the top. I hate that we live in this society that I had to put at the top of that post. This isn't a post to brag. I'm just like, oh my God, like, thank you for all the love and support I've received on Twitch over these last few months. I just got my first payout. It wasn't been like, oh, I'm, su- I'm not super rich from it for one. And it's not to be like, oh, look at me. I'm waving my money around. It's just like, I'm proud of that, that I've built of something course, from man. nothing. Yeah. But do you know, do you know what I mean? Like there's such a stigma around like posting. That. How do you feel? How do you feel yeah. about posting numbers and stuff like that? I'm all for it. I mean, I, I joke about it all the time that we do, we don't do great numbers. Like <laughs> we, we, we do a lot of work. We do a lot of content, but we don't do great numbers. And I don't think that's a bad thing. It's just, it's an incredibly oversaturated market mm-hmm. is making wrestling content, which is why, is why I think it's great that you're doing something different as well. You know, you're not just doing wrestling. You've actually expanded out and, good for you like you've got your first payment that's that's awesome thank you um but with us i mean it, we just do wrestling interviews which is mm-hmm. heavily saturated so we don't do great numbers and when we do yeah i'm proud of it yeah. i i want to tell people like yeah we've 
we've done record numbers on this video. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do feel slightly bad about it. Like when I post it, like I, I don't yeah. want to feel like I'm bragging. I'm doing mm -hmm. it because I'm proud. And it's mainly because one day I want to look back and go, oh yeah, that was cool. Um, you know, it'll come up in my memories and it'll make me feel good a year down the line. Yeah. So that's the main reason I do it. I'm not trying to say to everyone, oh, look at us, look how good we're doing. Like mm -hmm. I, I've just posted, <laughs> it's <laughs> completely transparent. I've just posted a tweet now on Twitter saying, um, here's all the videos we've done in the last month. I took out the, inspected the code and took out the amount of views each video had because some of them did better than others. And I don't want the people who were interviewed to feel bad yeah. for having less views than others. So the views aren't the important part of it. I don't want people to look at it and go, well, I'm not watching that video because it's only got 14 views. Yeah. They're all good interviews with very nice people who gave us their time. Um, so yeah, I, I, I want to be able to say like, if an interview does well, yeah, yeah. this interview got a, a thousand views. Thank you for coming on. It's been great. Uh, makes the guest feel good too. Yeah. But it's never, it's never about like trying to be better than another, all the other creators. Like I, I feel like that happens a lot where you have people bragging as if they're trying to like peak one up. up yeah. Bit. They're and trying to one, one up. up. Yeah. Yeah, and that isn't healthy because realistically, we're all in the same boat. Especially, mm -hmm. this is just exclusive to wrestling creators. I'd say, like, we're all in the same boat. None of us are going to be the next um, gorilla position or no. WWE affiliated podcast. Realistically, none of us are going to make good money from this. Exactly. So you, you need to just you need to just enjoy it. Like the, the the only thing we'll ever get from this is enjoyment. We won't get money. So make sure you enjoy it first. And if you ever make a few dollars from it, good for you. But exactly. you, you've got to enjoy it. Yeah, if you're not having fun with your content, it's the exact reason why I stopped doing podcasts and, and all of the shows that I do. I was like, I'm not getting fulfilled and I want to grow in other areas and I can't focus yeah. on other stuff if I'm doing all of this, which I will always love. And it's not a matter of like, oh my God, I hated that. It was just, I was it was starting to suck the fun out of wrestling for me. And I mean- shit happened like it happened but it was just like it's just too much for me and you're right there is an oversaturation of of the same thing like we see the same thing so many times like there's so many of the same podcast and this isn't a knock on anybody at all no. this isn't at all everyone has their own kind of like lane and stuff like that but there is this kind of group that is just like they're doing the same thing they're talking about the same thing and you need to find ways, my advice for anybody, and I'm not saying this as someone who's had like the biggest wrestling podcast in the world, because I definitely did not, but I had people listening and I had, I did grow an audience through reverb and everything like that. Yeah. And my advice is like, find something that makes you a little bit different. Yes, we're all talking uh -huh. about the same thing, but if you're not putting personality and you're not putting your own kind of spin on things, you're just going to get lost in the crowd. And it's not a fault of you it's it's a it's a fault of just there is a lot so you need to kind of not lack of a better term compete with the others i don't mean that in a competitive way i just mean trying to find out something that stands out and tries to make you a little different and this is a pat on my own back i'll i'll i'll, I'll this isn't me trying to be cocky but it's like i'm trying to do something different and i've always yep. had i've always i've never actually put myself in a bubble of like i have the best podcast but i know my personality is something bigger than other people have. And I've always kind of tried to exaggerate that in a sense of not being fake, but like um, exaggerate in a sense of like, I know my personality is very big and that's yes. what's kind of, I'm resting on with my shows or any of the content that it is. Why I, I prefer Twitch is because I think I can allow my personality to kind of jump out a little more than say on a podcast where you just kind of. You can tell dude, talking. you can tell your, you can tell how your content's changed and developed since you've gone to Twitch. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, for the better, man. Like you, you, you can definitely tell you are being yourself. Like yeah. maybe with the volume to end up a little bit, but yeah, of course. It, I mean, I'm not like this all the time when I was like, ah, like ah, Angie Mysterio. But like, I'm just well, maybe yeah. Angie, the exception. <laughs> May I'm always thinking about Angie Mysterio. Um, but I think I think in a sense too is like. <laughs> I, I go back on this and because people get a bit antsy with me when I talk about coming out and when I talk about being gay is because people get a little bit, you know, internalized homophobia, I think, in a lot of people and yes. they get a bit, like ticked off. Um, that's not anyone I'm talking to on Twitter on a, on a, on a daily basis, not those people, but there is some people that I've seen like 
I seen you, I seen, I posted that tweet and then you block me. I see it like, trust me. Um, but I think since coming out, my views on life has changed. My morals have changed. And I've just kind of been able to be myself a little bit more and not kind of really worry about too much about that things. And I'm just kind of focused on life now. So I think that's probably, um, helped a little But Twitter in, in, in a, can be accessible. That place can be a bit, um, it is, there, it is accessible. <laughs> there, there, there is <laughs> no way around that. It's it's accessible. It's a, a, a cesspit of negativity, toxicity, and hatred. Um, and the only reason I still have it is because of Ringsiders. Yep. Um, if it wasn't for Ringsiders, I wouldn't have Twitter. It. Um, it's it's interesting. Because I'm so grateful for Twitter in a lot of ways. Don't get me wrong. This yeah, isn't just don't like, get me wrong. I agree. Oh, I hate I hate Twitter to the point where it's like there's nothing good. I've built a lot of relationships with people like yourself and all different kinds of people that I yeah. consider friends. But it's just like you have to scroll through everything and you're just like negative comment, negative comment, negative comment. Someone calling out someone. There's someone I like and I love that person. And then it's like four other negative comments. And then it's very hard to kind of, you've got to learn how to deal with that because it comes yeah, with the territory, any true. social media, the world we live in now is such a, um, would you call the world a pretty negative place? Cause I would, I, I we're very oversensitive yeah. too. And it's just 2020, yeah. I, not just this year, but the last five or six years, I've noticed the world has kind of morphed into this other sense. And as I'm kind of getting older, I'm like, oh man, is this where the world is going to continue to go? Because we're not going to be able to say anything and we're not going to be able to even have an opinion on... The world is opinionated in so many ways, but it's it's not in other ways. Agree. It's weird. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a tough one because you can be labelled... Uh, what's the word? Like, I feel like if you have an opinion and even if it's an opinion which 99% of the world don't agree with, as long as you're not harming somebody, you should be able to have that opinion. Like, okay. I, I think there's a difference between free speech and hate speech. Like, yep. if if I was to say to somebody, I don't like you because you've got brown hair. Like, uh, some people would label that as hate speech. It's not. It's free speech. F hate speech is if I was to say, I'm going to beat you up because you have brown hair. Yes. And you, there's a call to action for harm there. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's the difference. Like if, if I was to say, that's what the difference is with Twitter. It, it, there's a lot of free speech on there, which you can just ignore if you want to, but there's a lot of it. Um, but people see it as hate speech. And I think there is a difference. And that might get me some heat because a lot of people don't agree with that. Like they just think anything negative is hate speech. It's not. And it's, I don't agree with it. It's, it's like this fine with. line though, isn't it? It's like, where do you yeah, draw the it. line? And people can't, people can't kind of dissect where it is that it turns into hate speech. I'm all yeah. for everybody having an opinion, whether it it, it, it lies with mine or not. Um, and it's also a right, I guess, with people to not agree with that opinion. But then yes. it's like, okay, I don't agree with you, but it doesn't mean I'm going to go to your house and kick your ass. You know what I mean? Like it, there's this Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. And I think the world in, in general, we've seen a lot in media with, we won't talk too much about politics because some people get so antsy about it, but we've seen it in, on the American politics. I'm sure you've seen it all over your news. It's all over my news is that it's like, you're either this side or you're this side. And yes, I'm very vocal about which side I'm on because I feel it's the way it lies with my morals. And it's like, yeah. you know, America is the most influential country in the world, in my opinion. And they kind you're of completely right. Yeah. a lot of, of the rest of the world where, our countries are both allies with the states and we kind of just follow what kind of goes on in, in a sense. Um, but it's, it's, it's like, I don't like, I don't like, I've made it very clear. And I, I've said this many times. I'm not a fan of Donald Trump. I think he's not a nice person. I think he's a racist. Horrible. He's a horrible person. But at the same time, I don't say I want Donald Trump to, you know, jump off a bridge. That's not what I'm saying. No, I don't agree with that man. I think he's proved my point. You've just, I, you you've, know what I mean? So true. I'm, I'm very much anti Donald Trump, but I'm not, I don't, yeah. I don't wish harm upon the man. I just wish he wasn't running a country. That's my Thank opinion. You. I think that's it's just, stupid. That's exactly it, man. And you, that's you an can opinion. Somebody mm -hmm. and not want them to die. Like, exactly. I, I hate it when you see tweets where it's like, um, oh, Vince McMahon needs to die. 
No. And it's like, no, he doesn't, because he's still somebody's dad, somebody's brother, and you know, his friend, somebody's, somebody's he's, friend. he's a lot of people's bosses, and he's he's yes. I don't want the man to die. Do I want him running that company anymore? I probably not. I don't know. He, he, he doesn't he's have a moral burn in his body, you know. Exactly. He, he but I don't want the man place. dead. But you Live don't want him dead. No. Go, go sit on a on a pool chair somewhere in, in and fact, sunbake. Like just saying you want him dead is hate speech. <laughs> like that that's the irony there is a lot of these people are like, well, ah, uh, this Donald Trump is, is is he should die because all he does is speak here. And it's like, well, what do you think you're doing? Like, don't lower yourself to that level. No. You're allowed to be have above your it. opinion. Be yeah, above, be above that. He be he above. says a lot of things that isn't okay. And it's like I and it's like you're he's he's projecting hate speech. But I I I I feel like I've towed the line pretty well. This isn't again being cocky of being like I don't like this man. I don't agree with this man. Here's the reasons I don't agree with him. But I don't wish harm upon him. I just want no. him way gone from from that side of things. He doesn't deserve to run a country. He, no, he he's the definition of. No, this isn't again a knock on anyone who is a sociopath or suffers, suffers <laughs> with antisocial personality disorder, but he is textbook sociopath. Like. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have empathy or sympathy or any kind of moral. Like mm-hmm. he's he's only ever thinking about himself and how he can better himself or look good to the public. Yes. And he'll manipulate the whole country into voting for him with lies. The whole world, in a sense. The whole in, world. I know we don't get to vote. We don't. We don't vote for American um in american elections however it's still people think people have commented this on many of my things when i've been pretty vocal about you know that um is that oh why would you care you're on the other side of the world i'm like indirectly this affects me a lot indirectly it affects us all it's 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 weird the the fact that our our prime minister is boris johnson um i mean speaks volumes because in the uk we've we've basically got the uk version of donald trump he My prime like- minister is not fantastic either. Um, Scott Morrison is his name. We call him ScoMo because I don't know why, but he is, it's not like, but every politician is going to be labeled as someone doesn't like them. Politi- politics would be the worst field of, of job to get into because you, there's no way you're going to please absolutely everybody. I and do I do sympathize with that part. Me too. I'm like, I couldn't do, like I couldn't you. do it. I'd cry all the time. Cause I'm like, why don't you like me? But it's just like, it, it, it's, it's, it is, Twitter and politics is a very similar game in my sense of just as a cesspool and it's very yeah. negative. It's always calling out one another. It's never yeah. like, I just want more. I know this is a, a pipe dream, but I just wish the world was built on a little bit more love and peace than negative yeah. and, 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 and differences. Just, with, we just divide too much. Being tolerant, like um, understanding is all you really need. Like mm-hmm. you can, you, somebody can have a completely different opinion to you or live a completely different lifestyle and that's okay. Like, are they coming into your house, kicking down your door and shouting it at you? Exactly. No. Are they harming you in any way? No. Are they taking any food off your table with that belief? No. Then what's the problem? Like, why should I care? You know what I mean? Like, it, yeah, just let them live their care? life. I, I, there's people who do, well, no, I, I, I'd say I'm actually pretty left-leaning like I'm, I'm a liberal in that sense I'll, I, I think everybody should be able to live their own life um race sexuality whatever as long as like if that makes you happy like yeah. and nobody's being harmed with that it, it's only a benefit to that person for being able to live their life freely good for them that is awesome that's what I want with everything in the world yeah but there's people who make it seem like that's a negative thing like having people being able to live their own lives is a bad thing and it's like, yeah, well, I, it's, I, it's, I don't get it's, that. So I'll speak out against that. I'll, I'm very vocal that yeah, that's a yeah. that's a negative mentality to have. Uh, but at the same time, I'll also say that person should be able to have their opinion to say that because... Oh, trust me, dude, you know, I, I've learned about a lot of pe- people's opinions in the last few months. And um, I guess as a human being, you have to learn how to tolerate that yeah. not everyone's going to think the same as long as they're not projecting any hate. I've experienced... Um, homophobia against me yeah. just on the internet uh, people have seen that and it's not a matter of I'm going to get that for the rest of my life there's always going to be someone that's going to call me some kind of slur I guess as me learning as a human being and learning to grow is just to go 
okay and just kind of yeah. like that's their opinion um Josh, you a- do a great job of that already man like oh, I i've just, seen yeah. i've seen some of the things you've posted on twitter and i've just been mm-hmm. like yeah man that's i don't know it's it <laughs> You deal with it very well. Uh, you, you have to. What? What is? What is? Yeah. The thing is, with people, they don't realize is that they think they can change everybody's views to match their own. And mm-hmm. I'm not agreeing with this dude. He should not have said that, or any of these people that I've, you know, the very few people I've had to deal with this in my. This is just based on my experience. I'm not gonna. They have already made up their mind that they don't like yeah. me because I like other men, um, and I'm not trying to change their view. Do you, as long as you're not coming to my house and, and, and attacking me, I really don't give a shit. Go and be some a homophobe somewhere else. Go live your life. Yeah. Um, to, for me as a person, I have to learn to kind of just, a, I can, I'm pretty thick skinned. I can brush off a lot of comments. Some people can't. Uh, I, I'm pretty proud of the fact that I can just go, mm, okay, cool. But it's learning to deal with that kind of stuff and being like, okay, a, my number one thing is to always go to humor because it's just, a coping mechanism that a lot of people have. I have yeah. that in me and I like to be funny. The next thing is, is that I'm over here being pretty happy. I'm a pretty happy guy. I'm living my life. I'm just kind of doing my own thing. If you want to call me a slur, go ahead. I'm just probably just going to put a picture up of two dudes kissing to make you feel kind of more uncomfortable. That's how I kind of see it. But yeah. learning to live your life, it's not just with, with, I'm just talking off my own experiences, but just kind of moving along with your life is just, you have to kind of learn to do it because the world shouldn't be so focused on changing everyone to match one view. That's not realistic. Not everyone's no. going to think the same. No. And I think we focus too much on that learning to accept one another and kind of come to common ground instead of being like, you know, that's it, think man. this yeah. way or think this way. It's like, no, let's just meet in the middle here and have your opinion, but we need to match law and opinion, um, you know, and stuff like that. There's a difference between being like, you know, I don't think two women should be able to get married and I don't necessarily agree with that, but you can do what you want. Um, there's a difference between that. Why well, I don't, I don't agree with that at all, but it's not stopping law and it's not stopping people from living their lives. So that's, that's absolutely it, man. There's always yeah. going to be differences of opinion. There's 9 billion people in the world almost. And you know, that there's a 9 billion different opinions. Like exactly. not everybody is going to see the same. You're never going to have people seeing the same. In fact, there'd be no advancement in the world if everybody thought the same. Like, yeah. it's because people think differently. That's how we discover new things. Or, you know, it that's always going to happen. So the least we can do is just say, let's tolerate each other. Let's understand each other and get on with yeah. our lives. Imagine yeah. what the world would be like if we could do that. It, oh, man, it'd be, you know, well, hopefully. understanding is a good word, though, to use. It's like understanding why someone thinks like that. I, I, I've experienced homophobia in my life and I ask why and they can never give me an answer. It's like, well, then you need to probably look at yourself and go, why do I not like this? Instead of just being so. I, I might get heat for this. I'm not sure, but the, the, <laughs> I'm, I'm a pretty outspoken atheist. And one of the reasons I'm an atheist is because I hate, absolutely hate when people use religion as a yep. reason for hate. And yeah, me too. if somebody says, I don't like, I don't like gay people because the Bible says it's wrong. I'll say, well, get fucked basically. And uh, well, obviously I'm that, not a religious person and stuff like yeah. that. And religion is built on a, a solid ground of that. And I'm not saying all religion because some people view no, religion very differently, all. but um, it is, I, I, I do understand what you mean and stuff like that. Oh, no. And I, I can, I can honestly, like, I, I know there's, extremist versions where it's like well i'm just the somebody might identify as a christian but they're they don't really go about preaching it fine yeah. whatever but the minute you start trying to say well somebody shouldn't be able to get married um to another man like that well because the bible says it's wrong well i sorry no uh i I'm, oh well I, I agree women you, should be subservient to men because this said so well no that's absolutely crap and it's, don't it's, use that as an no. excuse don't cherry pick no your beliefs yeah. make men and white people and straight people more powerful because that's crap. I don't and like, I, I live in a, I live in a, I've, I've grown up. I've been very open about the fact that I don't have a relationship with my father um, mm. just from stuff like that. Everyone kind of knows that. And I was essentially in a way indirectly, it's weird. I lived with my father after my parents got divorced and I wasn't with my mom, but indirectly she raised me. 
which mm. doesn't make a lot of sense. But I, I've grown up around a woman who's kind of been in charge and I've learned to accept from a very young age that women are equal to men as they always should be. But there's still, yeah. even in the year 2020, it's pretty crazy to think that some crazy. people are like men, right. women. It's like, that's not, it's people. We're all human beings. We all breathe this air and just don't understand it. It's the same when people like, I don't like any abuse towards anybody, but it's the same when people abu abuse animals in that way. It's like, that breaks my heart. It's just because like, how can you take that life? There's literal life that you're taking away. I just don't understand. But um, I, this is what this is what this show, like, it's so crazy to me. Like, the, like a couple of episodes, well, a bunch of episodes that I've recorded, it's like, it's so weird how these conversations can kind of divert. And it's like, we've gone so deep and other people have talked about cheese. So I'm like, this is just... <laughs> This is great to me, but to, to, I guess, to, um, lift us up a little bit and talk about some, um, some fun stuff. I mean, I could talk about all that stuff all day, trust me. Um, but to kind of, to kind of circle back here, um, it, it probably be pretty weird for you. So you're in your second lot of lockdown, correct? Yes. So you're probably uh, missing the second, world. <laughs> you're probably missing the world. National already. lockdown. Yeah. Mm. Um, I think we're two weeks into it now. Uh, so you're probably missing out on a lot of things, events, pubs, and 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 all different kinds of stuff. But um, I, I I'm, I'm only missing out on the pub. Uh, <laughs> we, we don't make it seem like I've got an interesting life outside of lockdown. I don't. <laughs> uh, listen, I'll talk you up, and you can just bring it back down. But I'll just keep yeah. talking. Um, but I know this is a standard question in every single chat that everybody has. But what have you kind of? What is kind of the positives you've taken away from being in lockdown, being in quarantine? Have you, I guess, super kicks is probably one to kind of come yeah, out of this. Year. It's, uh, it's like, it's damn. Given me, it's given me a, a lot of time to pick up some new skills. Yeah. Like I've always used the, the excuse. I don't have time to learn new stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, well, now all I've got is time. And I, I wake up and I'm like, right, well, I'll edit some more ringsiders videos. Cause we've yes. got bloody 15 to go out. And, <laughs> um, Jamie's messaging me all the time going, oh, when's this one going out? When's that one going out? So I've kind of had to learn how to edit quicker. Yep. And yep. because I've been editing so many, our videos are looking better. And yep. I've noticed I've that too. Learned. Consistency in your videos have been like... Oh, thank you. That really does mean a lot. Um, so yeah, that's that's a positive. Um, but just being able to pick up these new skills as a creator, you don't always get the time to do it. Yeah. But like I said, I've got so much spare time now that... I can actually put time into learning how to improve like the designs on super kicks, the editing on ringsiders, being able to reach out to more people to come on record more interviews. And now I'm at the point where I'm thinking when lockdown's over and the world is back to normal, how can I keep this up? You know? Yeah. I know that feeling like lockdown has been on and off with time of recording going kind of semi back into it a little bit. Um, but I've, I've still been, I've been on, I've been at work this entire time. I work in retail, unfortunately. So I've been, nothing is like changed in a way. Like I'm still going to work. It's just, I'm not really doing anything else. I'm going to work. I'm coming home, going to work, coming home. Um, but one thing that I have noticed with lockdown or quarantine, whatever you want to call it, wherever in, wherever in the world, what are you calling it? But it's interesting to me, not only on the content side of things, but just the amount of time I've had because I'm like, okay, when I go home, I've just got to kind of stay home. What am I going to do? I've kind of re fallen in love with a lot of things like going back and watching, even just watching television shows that I haven't watched in years. I'm like, yeah, dude. What the hell I'm going back and watching these shows that I used to love. And I'm just like, Oh, I forgot about this. And I wouldn't have had the time to do so because I'd be like, Oh, what am I going to do after work? Am I going to go see this friend? It's like, that's yes. kind of taken away from me. So I can't do that. So I'm like, okay, let's rediscover this. I've rediscovered love for just, gaming in general just going around and being like i'm gonna focus some attention and finish this game that i started two years ago and just never did because i'm just like i don't i don't have enough I, I feel like human beings are very spoiled and we're realizing how spoiled we are with just the freedom to be like let's go and watch a movie at, at the cinemas or let's go down to the pub and have a couple of pints with friends we can't we can't do that we, we can all take away that. something from this. There's a lot, there's, exactly. there is something we can all take away from this as human beings. And that is, we are spoiled, but you're completely right. Mm -hmm. um, the freedom we've got in, especially in the Western world is, mm. um, oh, we can go to the cinema. We can go to the shop whenever we want and buy mm -hmm. food. We can go get our 
prescription toilet paper. Off. We go by toilet paper whenever toilet everyone, paper. everyone wants to take yeah. a shit. Apparently, in this pandemic, absolutely. <laughs> like, hopefully, when all this is said and done and the world is back to normal, um, yeah. whatever that yeah, is, normal. What um, is normal now? <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, people can still look back at lockdown and quarantine and go, "Wow, we uh, we've really got it good now, haven't we?" Mm-hmm. And appreciate really what you have. Appreciate the little things. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I can't see it happening. If I don't yeah. want to be a pessimist, um, I, I think within a week after everything's back to normal, as if there's going to be a date where it's back to normal. Uh, oh, yeah. But twenty twenty one, January first. <laughs> yes, yay! Everything's going to be back to normal for my birthday. Yay! Um, it's like no, but, yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. But no. who knows? Uh, speaking of your, you've fallen in love with some TV shows that you've. Uh, not had time to watch for a while. I've been doing the same. And one of my all-time favorite shows is a New Zealand show. And I know you're not New Zealand, you're Australian. But New Zealand you, people, ugh, our dirt, to, dirty to an, To a, a British person, you know, it's it's kind of like the English and the I, Scottish, Australian and New Zealand. I get it. You know, you go, you're, the, you're not the <laughs> same, but you speak the same. Yeah, kind of the West, same. West um, Flight of the Concords. Have you ever seen oh, it? Oh, you're speaking to me. Okay, so my older brother is a fair, we have a fair age gap between us. We've got seven years between us. And I used to, okay, do you have an, are you, do you have siblings? Yes, I've got a sister. Okay, so I have an older brother. As a younger brother, I want to be someone that just, you know, I idolize my older brother. As a kid, all I want to do in life is just be my older brother. It's like, yes, let's go. So I would just sit in his room with him all day and watch whatever he's watched. I'd never be able to play PlayStation with him. I'd always have to watch, listen to the music he listened to. As an 8, 9, 10-year-old kid, you're like, I just want to be like my cool 16-year-old brother. You know what I mean? So um, he would watch Flight of the Concourse. I never understood it as a kid. I'm like, what is really going on here? But he would laugh, so I would start laughing. (laughs) As I got older, I've rewatched it. I haven't watched it in years, trust me. But it is very funny. And it's just something that kind of makes me feel like a bit nostalgic. I'm like, I used to watch that show with my brother. But yeah, it, man, it, it, it's, it's very funny. Absolutely genius. Uh, I, you're right, though. The first time I saw it, I didn't get it. And then I've, and I've rewatched it about 10 times. I'm like, this is genius. And the, I think the, yep. the best part Clever. is just the, the feud they have between the Australians and the people mm-hmm. from New Zealand what is that a real thing yes like yes Yes. really so in in (laughs) so what i've been what has been instilled in me since i was a young wee little chapper is that new zealand is and and they'll say the opposite don't worry new zealand is just the piss poor version of australia now i'm not throwing out any hate to new zealand i love new zealand however you're just it's like from my i remember a conversation that my grandpa had with me Um, bless his heart. He, I was, dude, I probably, I was just starting school. I was probably six, seven years old. My grandpa said these words and I will not paraphrase it. This is an exact quote. He said, New Zealand is Australia's shit. (laughs) (laughs) And I love you, New Zealand. I love Dakota Kai. Like I love, like, she's great. Um, but that's just, there is like, it's sibling rivalry. We love New Zealand, but like, we're going to pick on him. We're like the... the well, nobody old... else can pick on New Zealand. Exactly. If someone else picks on New Zealand, we'll beat you up. Like, don't come near New Zealand. That's our thing to... But they would say the opposite. They would think, you know, Australia is New Zealand shit. Um, so, it's you a, know... a big shit. Uh, yeah, well, we're an entire continent, so get wrecked. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, but yeah, that's... A, that. There is this kind of sibling rivalry w- between the two that is just like very like, you know, brother-brother kind of rivalry. But yes... It is real. I feel like we kind of have that with uh, we border Wales and Scotland, mm-hmm. and then there's Ireland somewhere over here. Um, yeah. The only difference is um, they all hate us. <laughs> That's just that they all hate us, and they all bond <laughs> over their hate for us. Um, and they wouldn't stick up for us if anyone else did. In fact, they'd join in. Um, <laughs> At this point. <laughs> yeah, they'd, they'd join in on the beating. And I, I like to think we'd stick up for them, but no, I, everybody in the UK, you've got uh, Wales, Scotland, Ireland, um, England, they all just hate us. And yeah. I, I, I like to think it's because we're, we're just very good at dominating the world. Ah, was. 
you know, you, the, yeah. <laughs> I guess, you know, I, it, we were we were very good at uh, running an empire. Um, I like to think it's a bit of jealousy on a well. Ah, uh, I like that. Um, but I am also from a Scottish family. Uh, Colin McInnes is a very Scottish name. Um, a little fun fact for you, Josh. Um, mm. The 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 McInnes clan was the only clan in Scotland to beat the Vikings. Oh, you should during have the you should have just during the raid, like you're the coolest human being in the world. <laughs> during the uh, the raids of the Vikings, we were the only ones to actually beat them in the raids. So Damn. I'm not saying I'm come from come from a family of badasses, but you know, um, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, there's part of me which is torn because I love Scotland, but I was born in England. I don't quite know where I belong, but yeah, everyone, everybody hates us, Josh. Um, how how right. do Australians feel about the UK? But, I, I think we we watch a lot of your television. Not me personally. I don't get British humor. I just don't understand it. I don't know why. But I grew up in a house where a lot of, especially but, like... You don't understand man, British humor? To a certain degree. You're I, Australian. You, I, 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 I understand but, it, but I just... I'm we're just basically like, the same. Apart Do you think we are? Yeah, you, the only difference I, I, between us, Josh, is you live at the other side of the world. That's true. I mean, in a, in a lot, of, I think I just grew up. So, let me put it this way: my my nana, my my grandpa, they would watch watch a lot of British humor, and I'd be like, "Ha ha!" But I grew up in a in a very time period of like watching Friends and Seinfeld. Okay. So I watched a yeah. lot of American humor, and that's Americanized so humor. Yeah, it's so different than Australian and British humor. But then a lot of me still, you know, I watched a lot of Australian shows like Summer High Tie, Kath and Kim, all of that kind of stuff. I grew up on a lot From the of twist. Oh my! Have you ever ever felt like this? Yeah, that was like after school. That used to air right after school. I used to run home. Same. I'd get my I'd get my my chips and stuff, and I'd be like, "Yep, yep, yep, let's eat and get home from school and watch Round the Twist." Um, Round the Twist was oh, I haven't watched that show in a long time. That just gave me all of these like memories in my brain. I'm like, oh my god, Round the Twist. But yeah, we used to, I, I I um I grew up on a lot of that. Like I remember watching Friends as a young kid, which in hindsight. My mum probably shouldn't have let me watch Friends because it's probably a little bit adult orientated in some senses. Mm-hmm. Like there's some things that I'm like, mm. but I used to play Grand Theft Auto as a six year old. So my yeah. mum was like, he's quiet. <laughs> so I didn't give a fuck. That's how she was. And I love my mum for that. So, um, but yeah, I grew up in a lot of that time, but I remember my, my, my grandparents, even my parents watching a lot of British stuff. And I just never really got it in a sense of, I got it when I was older, I guess. And and I, I'm like, okay, this is similar to what we're watching, what, what's going on over here. But as uh, growing up, I was always like watching American stuff, American movies. It's the entertainment um, capital of the world, isn't it, America? It's, yeah, it's I think very people true. People outside of America realize how much we grow up in the, you know, it's it's weird to me when an Australian is on a TV show. I'm like, that that's our accent. That's what we sound like. I'm like, oh my God. Because I've yeah, just grown heart. up with the Simpsons and I've grown up hearing wrestling i've grown up with wrestling it's majority of them are american that's a very good point josh you well, i think the reason we like a lot of american stuff whether it's music or tv and anything mm. like that is rooted in wrestling um yep. I, I put a tweet out a few weeks ago saying i know every state and city in america me too like, that's not a lie i i like it you know I, if somebody says oh where's the city i'll be like oh it's in georgia or yep it's in maine yep. or something like, how do you know that and i'm like well the entrances in wrestling they tell you the city and the state and it just sinks into your head because you um, the video games that you play of all these yes. wrestling and i'm like okay i know this person's from i know randy orton's from st louis missouri i know yep. i know mickey james is from richmond virginia i just know these yep. things because but tell me i, I could name i I could name like half of, not even half of the amount of places that are in this, my own country. Not I'd be like, I don't know uh, where I that is. Yorkshire and Lincolnshire. I don't know anywhere else. Um, don't ask me. I don't know. But America, uh, sign me up to all the major cities in, in, and states in that, in that country. As long as it's been on, on wrestling in some capacity, I got you. I know where, where that the, yeah. uh, you know, what I know some arenas that have been in places because I'm like, why do I, why do I know this? Why do I know this? Because of wrestling. And it's just so in us that it's like, like you said, music and, and television, movies and all of this. It's like, I think it's just a, a part of our culture growing up. Americans yeah. don't realize this. I've, I, the few times I've been to America and I've spoken to people like, uh, if we're in an Uber, they're like, oh, where are you guys from? Usually they say, are you Australian? 
And I'm like, <laughs> oh, do you get? No. I've got, I've got now you British before talking to people just through. Oh, weird, internet. right? And I'm like, no, I'm not. So, so, I don't think I sound like you. I don't think I sound like you. But then other people we don't sound the same. But what we're saying is the same. What, like, True. if you get what, the way, yeah, the way, the way we, we pronounce it. words, yeah, 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 and like we we both say mate quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we're, there's words that we both use that are the same. We've both mm -hmm. got kind of the same self-deprecating sense of humor. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like that's a very British Australian thing. We very. do banter, you know, mm -hmm. that's a, I don't feel like Americans can banter as well as us. Um, no, like they get their feelings hurt a little bit. And that's not yeah, everybody. That's we're not attacking so everybody. Don't worry. There is a lot of stereo. There's a lot of things the same between British and Australians, I think, yes, which is true. why whenever I'm in like a new they'll go, you're Australian. I'm like, guess again, where else speaks <laughs> English? quite prominently clues in the name oh um canada no no england <laughs> um, you got it bingo <laughs> but they'll they'll always say like um oh, i've never been um i expect them to say like oh, i've never been to england but most of them have never been out the state like yeah most people i've spoken to haven't had to leave the state because everything they have is there it's mm -hmm. not a knock on them it's just america's so big you can go exactly. from Florida to New Orleans and it's like going to two different countries. You can go from, you know, Washington to New York and you're looking at two different lifestyles, two different cultures. You don't need to leave the country if you live in America. You're in a yep. bubble and why would you leave it? There's nothing. I wouldn't. I'd be like, I'm staying would. here. I'm going to stay in my little yeah, area and be happy. I, I can't knock them. I do the exact same thing. I, I'd stay in America or even my state. Uh, yeah. The only reason I go to America so much is because I, I want to be there in I'd their culture because I, I love the to. culture of America. I um, I've never been out of this country. I've barely been. I, I I've only in the last maybe five years of my life gone to other states. I've been in this kind of bubble, um, because I don't think people realize with Australia is that it's not like people like look on the map, for example, and they're like, oh Adelaide, that's down here. Melbourne's just over here. That must be like a three hour drive. No, it's like fucking 12 hours. And you know, if I'm not getting on a plane, I'm driving there and it takes a long time to get Australia to another place. Is so it's big, so, dude. It actually is really, people don't realize I'm like, oh, how many states are there? I'm like, well, there's five states, two territories. And they're like, well, that's it. And I'm like, yeah, but they're huge. And it's just the thing with Australia is that it's not just like town, 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 town. It's like town, then like two hours of bush. It's just fucking nothing. Yeah. And then it's another city and all the major cities in Australia are really spread out across the country. Yeah. So it's hard to get to somewhere like Brisbane or like Melbourne or Sydney. Like Sydney is like a 15 hour drive from me. I've got family Adelaide's in Sydney, Melbourne, and some of my family live in New Zealand. And okay. even in New Zealand, they're saying like, it's, it's a surprisingly long drive to get to places. And my family mm -hmm. in Australia are always saying like, if they want to go visit each other, it's, it's like a day's drive to get there. Yep. Um, so yeah, that sounds about right. I mean, I can't imagine that because if we want to get to London, it's four hours in the car. Mm -hmm. it's oh God. If I drove four hours in the car, I would... Um, so if I'm leaving from Adelaide, I'm about an hour outside of Adelaide I live, but if I was leaving from Adelaide and drove four hours, I would probably be in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> really? I'm not kidding. because <laughs> So Adelaide... If for anyone that doesn't know the map of Australia, Adelaide's on the bottom. We're on like the, yeah. we're right near the sea. We're right on the bottom. Um, and the closest major city to us, I believe, is Melbourne. And that's 11 hours. So if I want to go from anywhere from, and Adelaide's like the biggest city between <laughs> Adelaide and Melbourne. So, do you, do, you know, do you know where we'd be if we drove for 11 hours? Probably be in like France or something, wouldn't you? Maybe in Italy, honestly. <laughs> I swear to God, we can get, I remember we used to go to, um, I used to go for coach trips with my mum and dad when I was about 10. And yep. we'd go from Hull, which is where we live, all the way to Italy. And we'd stop off on Disneyland on the way in yep. France. And within six hours, we were in France and, you know, we'd stay there for the night. But if we'd have carried on going, another six hours would be in Italy. We, you can crazy. do that drive in 12 hours. We you can just go in, from different go countries. It's like, that's so bizarre to me. We're on an I've island, literally an island. Countries, you know, <laughs> yeah. it, and you're still, you're not even in the next city. <laughs> I can't. There's honestly, towns, no. of course. I'm not saying there's nothing, but there's towns, but they're all small. And a lot of, um, 
Ad- South Australia is my state that I live in and it is very outbacky in the sense of like, it's just a lot of nothing, a lot of dry weather and just, that's why this place is on fire so much, everybody, is because there's a lot of just scrub and nothing in between all of these places. So um, there's outback country towns and then there's cities and we have like a few major cities and then there's smaller cities. But, you know, to get anywhere for, for to put it into context for anybody, if Ariana Grande was to come and tour this place, um, she would hit the major cities, the six major cities of the um, of the of the country she wouldn't be going to the ins and outs towns and she wouldn't be going to every single arena she'd be getting on a plane and flying and, and be able to do this her tour in like a week um, yeah it wouldn't be something where she's going to all of these different states and like in the u.s she would do a big state tour and you know do all of these towns within one state that doesn't happen here you get one shot a lot of the time they don't come to adelaide anyway because adelaide's kind of the foot of Australia it's kind of the ass <laughs> we're the meth capital of the world though everybody Adelaide congratulations really? we actually genuinely are yes um if you want to do meth come hit me up um I probably <laughs> probably there's probably someone that lives next door to me that does it yeah Adelaide is the actual meth capital of the world wow I did not know that yeah Adelaide does a lot of meth I don't know why Adelaide is a great place to live I feel when you're really old it's kind of boring there's not a lot to do and the only way I can Apart explain it that. to people, people don't know what Adelaide is. I don't know why, but the way I explain it is like Rhea Ripley is from here. If you like wrestling, that's where Rhea Ripley's from, is from Adelaide. Oh, really? She's from, so, okay, that's cool. She's from Adelaide. Um, so I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. I'm, I, I like wrestling and Rhea Ripley's kind of lit. So yeah, yeah, she's from the same, I'm like, I'm from the same place as Rhea. So, Meth and Rhea Ripley. That's. That's pretty much, it's pretty much, and Sia, if anyone likes the singer Sia, you know, with the hair yeah, that comes yeah. out, Sia comes from Adelaide. She's an Adelaidean, if you will. Is that what they're uh, called? Adelaidean? Adelaidean. I guess I'm an Adelaidean. I guess. Ah. That, I guess it kind of has a ring to it, right? I don't know. I just make Apparently sure. Apparently we're called Hollensians. You see, that's a tongue tie to me. I'd be like, blah, 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 blah. blah. And I'd be like, yeah, whoa. I, I, yeah. I thought Hollians would be more appropriate but hollandians is apparently it's, it's weird do you say you know when you're talking to people you probably talk, you've talked to many different wrestlers from the states and from all different kinds of places but if they ask you if like where are you from do you just say england are you just like, yeah i'm from england yeah I, don't really, I i say just from australia because i'm like i'm not going to try and explain to you where i'm at I'm just i used like, to I'm try and australia. explain it mm-hmm. but I, i'd say oh, um they go are you near london i'd be like well no, we don't think we are. But if I say I'm only four hours away, you'll go, oh, so you're near London. Yeah. I'm like, well, no, it, I mean, that's half the country for us. But yep. um, for you, four hours is fuck all. But for us, yeah. it, it's half the country. So yeah, to me, it's not near London. But for you, I get yeah. that too. Trust me. They're like, so you're you're from Melbourne. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not from Melbourne. I'm, I, I'm not from Melbourne either, but I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, sure. I'm, I'm in the same country as Melbourne. So um, yeah, they, I'm from Australia, the, the big one with the big spiders where yep, things are upside Big spiders, down. We're, yeah. we're our own <laughs> continent, we're on the bottom of the earth, just let us go. Um, we're, we're like 20 years behind with everything, we have piss poor <laughs> yeah. internet. You're it's, just it's getting bad. the 90s now, right? You're in yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, Spice Girls, Britney's just come out, Britney's Power huge. Rangers. Yeah, pa- oh, Power Rangers, go, go Power Rangers, you know. Oh, you'll love this then, Josh, look at that, you want one of them? Oh, wow, you got one of those cool new things that have just hit the shelves. <laughs> yeah. All um, the kids are after these, yeah. aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we have the worst, we have some of, for the, one of the bigger countries in the world, we have some of the worst internet in the world, so... Try being, you know, someone that lives on the internet and have to deal with piss poor internet. It ain't fun. Oh, that's depressing. That, it you, is. I didn't mind. But I love Australia. Anyway, everyone out there, come to Australia. Well, I mean, not right now, because no one can really leave their countries at the moment because the world is literally caving in on itself. But um, when when I want to come to Australia, I, I it is on my bucket list of places to go. Hit me I up when you're in Australia. Things. I'll I'll fly over to Melbourne. Go to Melbourne. Melbourne's a great city. It is. It's a very clean, beautiful city. I love Melbourne a bit. So go to Melbourne and I'll fly. Don't come to Adelaide. That's, Don't come. Yeah, to man. I think that's where I've got family, so I think I would check it out. And you know, I'll, if that would be awesome, wouldn't it? If we could actually. I've always out. been like that. I'm like oh, I'd like to just meet some of these people, like select few yeah. people that have met like just become friendly with on Twitter. I'm like, I would like to do that. I was going to be in the States this year and then COVID happened. And if I was going to be in the States right now, like this would have been the month I would have been leaving really a couple of days ago. If COVID oh, didn't man. 
But then March come around and they're like, if you don't cancel now, you won't get your money back. That makes like, sense. Yeah. So, and it, now like international travel is probably going to be years away. So since we're both <laughs> such big fans of America, why don't we just meet in America at some point, All right. Josh? All right. Let's do that. That's, let's do that. You've been to America a few times, haven't you? Yeah, six That's, times. Holy crap. It's like a yeah, like like 40,000 hour flight for me if I... <laughs> yeah, man. I was going to say there's, what, 18 hours difference think, in the time between you and California? <laughs> yeah, some, it's something like something crazy. I'm so far <laughs> in the future. People are always like, how are you that far? In, I'm like, I don't know. The only countries that are f- further than us in time is New Zealand. Um, we're on the same time. Adelaide is on the same time zone as Japan, which is really weird to me. Like same time zone as J- Tokyo, yeah. which is so new Japan should be right up my alley to be completely fair. Cause it's on at nighttime. <laughs> I don't have to watch it in the morning. So, but it just, yeah. yeah, it should be, but it, it always baffles me, dude, how to me, it will always be time travel. Like you are legitimately 10 hours ahead in the future. Yeah. Like not just, Literally. it's not the same time. This is somehow, you in the future talking to me in the past and the world's still what, shit spoiler uh, alert <laughs> you, you, yeah <laughs> you've, you've got an extra half an hour yeah because well. I, I know i'm for, okay so south australia is really weird and it has like the we're on the half hour time when the rest of the country is on the on the hour time i don't know adelaide just likes to be different because some parts some parts of australia have daylight savings and some don't so what is time even, is it there now? Is it, it half past 10? It's, yeah, 10.38 p.m. That is the time right now. 10.38 p.m. Yeah, because it's 12.08 p.m. here now. For some reason, that 10 hours doesn't baffle me. It's the extra half an hour. Everyone says that to me. I Luke, <laughs> like Omega Luke, when the first time I talked to Luke, um, you know, a year and a half, nearly two years ago, he was like, are you sure it's that time? I'm like, Yes. I can yes. show you my watch. Like it's, it's that time. And he goes, but you're on the half. And I'm like, I know I've had this conversation with so many people because as you probably noticed with my content, this is for everybody listening is that there's a reason I do a lot of things that like, Oh, I start at nine 30 is because the rest of the world will be at whatever time it is on their hour. So sense. I'm, I'm in the, I'm in the, it makes it harder for me, but easier for everybody else to catch my content. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to stream at 10 30 AM. Everyone's like, okay, so that's your, so it's on the hour. It's just a little bit easier for me to be like, okay, that's this time in the States. It's this time in the UK. Um, I don't, I don't understand it. It's just because yeah, some I'm in a daylight savings place in South Australia, but like up the top of Australia, they don't have daylight savings. So I really don't understand the concept of time. It really does baffle me, especially when every six months, the time changes with daylight savings. And I'm like, okay, so what time do I got to be awake to watch this? Or what time do I got to have this person on my show? Or like, Oh, like I, it, it's so hard, but the beauty of wrestling is that I'm just like, okay, so what time does Raw start? 8 PM in the States. So that's when I'll stream on this day. So whatever time Raw's on is when I'll be streaming on Wednesday or something like that. Yeah. That's the other thing. Like for you, you watch Raw, SmackDown, NXT, whatever, like early morning for you, you're already yes. up and about. So, so yeah, so basically of... a Monday night, 8 p.m. for Raw when it airs, and it airs at like 1 a.m. for you or something like that, doesn't it? Yeah. It's relatively early. So for me, I'm up having breakfast in the wi- in the winter time when it's not daylight savings time, and they're on daylight savings time when you guys are on daylight savings. It airs at 9.30 in the morning. And then in the summertime, That's it amazing. airs at 11.30 in the morning, but on the Tuesday. So I'm watching Monday Night Raw on a Tuesday morning. That's a dream. I'd love nothing more than um, to just get in the morning. I've always you wanted to watch. Breakfast. When I get to watch... When I want to watch wrestling, I'm always like, I've always enjoyed wrestling more when I have work during the day and I get to come home at seven o'clock in the evening and get to watch wrestling like in the dark when I'm waking up and I'm like, I know a lot of people have talked to me about this and they're like, oh, I'd love to wake up and watch wrestling at 9am and then have the rest of the day to yourself. I'm like, I would love to be able to go do all the business that I need to do in the day, then come and then home relax, and, like, with the relax and watch wrestling. So it's weird. Right, if I want to uh, watch wrestling live, I have to, I'm essentially in a way I, if I wanted to watch it every week for say, I'd have to give up a day's work to be able to, yeah, <laughs> to be we, able to watch it. We've both got, we, we've both been shortchanged a bit with this, haven't we? Like, well, your, well, your way, at least mine is like, at a time when I'm awake, you have to stay awake to watch wrestling. Dude, which, which I, 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 the other day when we streamed uh, 
sorry, the other month we streamed Double or Nothing um, AEW. And it was the first live stream we'd done. Yep. And Jamie was like, we need to do live streams. And I was like, this ain't going to end well. So <laughs> we streamed. And I know Jamie is notorious for falling asleep at the drop of a hat. Like he. Oh, God. So we're streaming and he goes, I'm just going to get some food. And I'm like, all right. He hadn't even said anything for about half an hour on the stream anyway. It was just me talking to myself. He comes back in, lays down on the other sofa, and I, within a minute, I heard, I heard him snoring. And I was like, this is oh, great no. content. Oh, so my God. I, I just turned the camera to him and live streamed him sleeping for an hour. Oh, my and God. <laughs> then he woke up and went, why am I on the camera? And I went, well, because you've been asleep. And he was like, no, I wasn't. I was like, well, you was. So it was just my hair fever. I was like, Jamie, I've literally got a video of you for like the last hour snoring and sleeping. And I was like, we're never doing this again. And it, this, I just tend it, to, it's so sad because the end of the stream is just me reaching over to turn it off. And that's it. We just, oh, bless. And, uh, oh. We can't do it. <laughs> it. I wouldn't be able to, I always, I'm like, whenever I go to complain about wrestling being on at 10 a.m. or whatever, um, I always think of, people in the UK, I'm like, they have to watch it at like, like literal one o'clock in the morning. I would not be able to do that. I'd make exceptions, of course, for the big stuff. And I'd be like, okay, I'm going to make myself stay awake. But I don't, I wouldn't be able to do that on a weekly, but say if you wanted to, if you really wanted to watch Dynamite every single week, or you wanted to watch NXT every single week, you have to do that every single week. And it would drive I watch me. Dynamite like, every week. How? I watch I Dynamite know. every week live. And then um, I'll watch NXT the next day. Um, stay up for every AW pay per view. Wouldn't be able to but, do it. Uh, to be fair, mate, the best thing about being in America was being able to watch Raw live um, at like eight o'clock yeah. in the evening. And I got to my it's friend Nate's house, and he was like, "Oh, Raw's on tonight." And I was like, "Oh my god, we've got to watch Raw live. That is the coolest thing ever." Mm -hmm. We're in bed by like eleven. And I was like, that sounds I'm, like I'm, a dream to me. That sounds like a dream. That, right? I, in the winter time, I got to like set my alarm and make sure that I'm actually up and awake and not like, you know, half asleep going like, cause I'm a bit of a night out. I stay up till like one or two in the morning on for the most part. So like me waking up in the morning, I'm, I'm a drowsy person when I get out of bed. I don't know why I just always have been. It takes me like a long time to like, if I start work at nine o'clock, I've got to be up by like seven thirty because I'm like, okay, I need to like actually wake up and, and experience waking up and stuff like that. Um, so I put my alarm on. And I'm like, oh my god, I got to get up and watch wrestling. I would love it to be like, oh, it's eight p.m. I've just had dinner. I can like sit down on the couch and watch wrestling until eleven o'clock and just go to bed. Like I just that's Americans don't realize how good they have it. They, they don't, don't realize. realize how lucky they are. Like uh, us, the, the UK and Australia, are they're just like, you know, they're black sheep cousins yeah. that nobody will, you know, they don't know about us. They don't know the struggles we go through for pay-per-views and live events. They, but why would they? they? They live in the, regardless of who's in charge of their country, it's one of the greatest <laughs> countries in the world. I love exactly. America. Always will do. I always have and, a fascination uh, with it. And Canada. I love Canada. And Canada, yeah, man. Canada really has their shit. Probably together. Renee Young. I think it might be Renee Young. Even as a gay I, man, I'm like, oh, that woman is beautiful. I would just dude, I, I, I want a very pretty lady. I want to marry Renee Young and she just seems like what? a cool chick. And it's like, oh, she would just want to like hang out and like just just be cool all the time and just look like that and just I think she's just one of the coolest people. In I'll the world. fight her husband, whoever he is. I'll fight <laughs> some <him>. dude. <laughs> some dude. <laughs> There's like three or four on the, my list, and like of or just even just cool women. Like for some, I watch Lita stream on Twitch just because I think she's the one of the coolest. I'm like, how is this woman so cool? She's just been around forever, and she's just got tattoos, and she's just like just the dopest human being, and she's just like nice and like I don't know. There's just some people in the you world. You want to know something like, really? sad about um I, I met lita before at a comic con oh, and really? there was nobody in the queue to meet her and Aww. it was free to meet her like you could just walk up to her at the Aww. table and start talking to her and there was nobody in the queue and as Aww. soon as i saw her I, I literally ran over and i was like oh my god it's later and she was just so happy to speak to somebody and oh, nobody that's was like, oh, no. Dude, I, 
I was heartbroken for her. Um, I would have been too. But because it was a comic convention, not everybody was a wrestling fan. Yeah, yeah, Not everybody yeah. knew her. But as soon as I saw her, I was like, my God, I need to speak to Lita. Is she um, nice? Is she a nice dude, person? She's lovely. And I hate when you hear stories about wrestlers and you're like, oh, they weren't very nice to me. Lovely, dude. Um, oh. And we also met um, at the same one, a table down was Al Snow. And um, <laughs> I went up to him and he was on Skype with his daughter. Um <laughs> And he just, he handed me the phone a second and went, just talk to my daughter a second. So I'm on Skype with Al Snow's daughter. And what I was the like, hell? hi. Um, <laughs> I'm just some random like, person. <laughs> so he could pick up some merch and be like, do you want to buy one of these? And I felt pressured to do it. So I was like, okay. So I bought this Job Squad t-shirt off him <laughs> while I'm talking to his daughter. And I was like, that was the most random interaction I've had. Like, I was like, I don't really know what to say. I'm buying merch off your dad. Yeah, um, just at your dad's like table. Like I'm just yeah. like, I just come over to say hello to him, but hello. Uh, yeah. That's so cool. Uh, that makes me, I'm picturing this for some reason. I don't know why. I've never been to one of these like Comic-Con conventions or anything like that. I'm just picturing like a warehousey type deal or like some kind of arena type deal. And there's Al Snow with some merch that says Job Squad. And there's just Lita just smiling and being like, I hope someone comes and talks to me. And then like you go over to her and she's just like the happiest person. And she's like, hell That's yeah, it. man. I'm like That's oh, absolutely just- it, dude. She was just happy to talk to somebody. Um, that's so great she's really nice on twitch too and she follows me on twitter and I, i'm like that's cool does she oh. i have a follow from Alita. um you know there's random random wrestlers that like randomly just follow people like yeah not like, like cena uh, when he just went and followed fucking everybody um <laughs> but, <on> a <laughs> yeah, he just or followed like, everybody um, every day i'll see um a screenshot of somebody getting followed by sergeant slaughter yeah uh, <laughs> And they're like, oh my God, Sergeant Slaughter followed me. And it's like, do I tell them that he follows everybody? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, Lita follows me. I'm like, that's cool. Because like I said, she's one of the coolest people. Like she's just timelessly cool. And I'm just like, okay, that's great. Um, I mean, to, gorgeous. Just, I mean, just a, yeah, just, were you, a, were you a leader or a Trish guy? Were you leader? Trish. Oh, see, I was Trish too. I was like, "Oh, is he going to say leader?" And then I'm going to be like, "I, was I, I like, Trish. I like blonde in general." I, uh, yeah, Trish Stratus, man. Um, Twelve-year-old me was a big fan of Trish Stratus. Trish Stratus was. Um, but to one-year-old me is a huge fan of Trish Stratus. Uh, but I'd love to say, who, who Victoria is my favorite female wrestler of all time. Well, yeah, everyone I, knows who mine is. It's Molly Holly. I don't need to. Get, <laughs> I loved it, Molly Holly. So good, man. Victoria's great though. Victoria was fantastic. Very underappreciated woman in the business too. Yeah, did a dude. lot for the business that does not get any credit for. She's my bucket list interview uh, when it comes. She to seems like a great practice. interview too. She just seems very bubbly. Yeah, very yeah, bubbly yeah. lady. Um, but um, to kind of wrap things up, we're talking about like people on Twitter and stuff like that and wrestling and and stuff. Um, there's a lot of really good twitter accounts within wrestling i'm not talking like i'm talking like the celebrity ones like wrestlers themselves and there's some that are just really funny have you noticed that there's a lot like you're very witty and i like the way you interact or oh, people that you. just call call um you know people that like even like um i'm um, like for example like someone like mia yim okay she's on twitter and she's calling out people being like and she has just great comebacks and stuff like that is there yes. someone to you to me the one of my favorite accounts on Twitter, regardless of whether it's a celebrity or not, is Malcolm Bivens. Cause he's like yeah, the man. most hilarious just dude. I'm just always it's just always a smile. He's always putting up some dumb video. I, I'm just like, I really like Malcolm Bivens. Gotta agree with you there. Malcolm Bivens is oh, hilarious. And I don't know so if you good. saw Sammy Zayn's tweets yesterday against Bobby Lashley. Yeah, I seen some of them, but uh they were okay, kind of so good. he because they have a match at Survivor Series. Yep. Sami Zayn put out a tweet saying, hey, Bobby, uh, let's just be nice to each other this time. I don't want to bring up your sisters or your family anymore. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, let's just be nice. I'll start. You're looking really jacked at the moment. And Bobby replies back saying, um, yeah, goddamn right, I'm jacked. It makes it easier to throw you across the ring. And then Sami just replies, uh, very typical that the United States champion would reply to a tweet about peace with hostility. Oh. And I was like, wow, uh, Sammy, that, <laughs> getting a bit that's a, uh, that's a uh, check on his <laughs> checkmate. So on I, that I one. love Sammy Zane. Sammy Zane's hilarious. Zane um, yeah. Sammy I, Zane. 
Sami Zayn, Malcolm Bivens, yeah, Mia Yim, she's oh. so funny. As she's Reckoning, really, as, reckoning as Reckoning or whatever. Yeah. She just, right. she just, oh my God. Like people will be like, retribution sucks. And she's like, well, that's what your mom did or something like that. She'll be like, yeah. oh, she'll be, she just owns or she goes, I like the wrestlers on Twitter or anyone really, whatever you want to call them. But um, when they go onto their profile and they look at something or look at their picture and then they comment on it, I'm like, oh, you took that extra step you and it made it all step. worth it. Yeah. Yep. You, you did your research. Oh, uh, so good. And you, you ruined them. Um, you yeah. made the list of words. I, I, so I agree. I love that. I love that. So yeah, like it's always like Bivens, Mia Yim, Reckoning, whatever the fuck you want to call it these days. And but, us. We're, and, we're oh, hilarious. Yeah, and us. So just follow those people on Twitter. I'm um, speaking of that. The floor is yours. Promote anything you need to promote. Where can people find you? Oh God, I've never done this before. Um, oh, well, put, put, put on your, you got your big, big boy shoes again. You got to you got to have them on this. We've had a very intelligent conversation, and then we talked about Vegemite as well. But um, promote <laughs> what you need to promote. <laughs> All right. So you can find me at Hooch McGraw on Twitter and Instagram. You can find Ringsiders at Ringsiders Pod on Twitter and Instagram. And Superkicks, of course, can be found at Superkicks, S-P-R-K-I-X. You can see it in the background there. Yeah. On Twitter, Instagram, and superkicks.com. And use the promo code JOSH00 for free shipping, ah, of look course. Look at that, look at that, look at uh, that. I'm always posting that on Twitter, fighting the good fight. You know, I'm like, come on, come on, you, come on. Hey, your videos, I, I'm not joking. I, I want you as the official voice of Superkicks. My I, God, I, 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 I hate listening to my, I think anyone hates listening to the, You do the greatest, the, the videos <laughs> you produce are better than anything I've done for Superkicks. I'm not even oh. joking. Like, I'd actually have that video playing on the big screen in that shopping center. Like, it's it's I, weird I, I, to me. It's because this isn't a knock on, like, what I'm doing or anything like that. But in the grand scheme of things, that took me, like, five minutes to make. Like, it takes it's awesome, no though, time. Dude. That's why I do not so many of them. Good. Not everything it, good has to be... And you know, a war and peace. You know, it yeah. doesn't. It, it it you that took you five minutes, but it it looks the business. It's exactly it just, what we needed. Uh, I love the voiceover. You can tell that when you're speaking, you genuinely mean what you're saying. Yeah, you've done your research on everything. It's perfect. So it's it's uh, because I do, I do like actually. Royalties. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll happily t I'll just no but you know um it's like that thing um but it's it, to me it's like I've this isn't again this is not bragging anybody but there has been several different times where people have you know offered to be like hey can you do this and we'll give you this and if it's not something that I actually like or I know the people behind that are actually passionate and put the time in yeah. I'm not I don't have any it's not at the end of the day it doesn't benefit me in any way you know what I mean yeah. like it's it's no and it's no it's no hassle off my back to do to take five minutes when I'm editing a video of my own anyway, just to chuck in a promo. It's why I constantly do different ones and stuff like that. And you hear it at the, um, the, the start of this show and stuff like that is I chuck the promo in. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you see the, the super kicks promo. It's just because, you know, people have taken the time on, on me to ask me to come and do stuff. And then I also want to make sure that what I'm putting my name against, if it means anything is actually good stuff. It's why I went and purchased something like this. And I'm like, okay, I like this. And, and we've talked in DMs and stuff like that. I give you my feedback and I'm like honest about it. I'm like, okay, this is what I, you know, everything yep. about it. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not someone, I don't think. You're not a skill. No, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely not. And like, I need, like I said, there's, there's a reason why this is one of my first affiliate things in, in two and a half years is because I don't, I don't want to have the opportunity to do something. And then it turns out that it's like. I don't know the people behind it for one. Yeah. And like the, the, the product isn't good and stuff like that. I like this product. I like you guys. And it's just like, well, why wouldn't I in, in my head? I'm like, this is the way I can try and help. This is how good of an affiliate you are, Josh. You've got the super kicks t-shirt in the background and I'm wearing uh, a <laughs> <laughs> i not even wearing super kicks. <laughs> I have that. So for anyone that doesn't watch me on Twitch, it's twitch.tv forward slash Josh Robinson double zero, by the way, stream like four or five times a week. I keep that in the background and I've got like a, a thing set up on my Twitch. So you can just write exclamation point super kicks in the chat and you can find all the details, gives you a link to super kicks and stuff like that. Just if anyone, to me, I, I get kind of the usual crowd that come into my Twitch streams, but it's like, if I get that one person that's like, what is this? They type that in the chat, they click that link. That's at least another view on your site. Um, yeah, man. And, no, you know, technology nowadays, you've just blown my mind. Yeah, see, you, you kids with your 
twitches and listen i'm gonna be 25 in a few weeks i consider that i'm closer to 30 so i may as well start booking my funeral insurance oh dude it was all, down yeah, all downhill from 25 for me that's what uh, my brother tells to me he's like he's like 25 <laughs> he's like you're gonna start getting real killer hangovers soon you're gonna get back pain and it's just like you start planning your life and that's when everything's just going dude, to but it's so true your brother's right it's it was i i thought it was just a myth but um mm -hmm. literally as soon as i turned 25 I've just been on the decline since, mm -hmm. and um, I, not to bring it down. I, I hope you're looking oh, forward to your birthday, I, but um, I am. I, well, I'm not. I'm in lockdown now. I don't know when I'm gonna. Like I said, I don't know when I'm gonna release this. It could be after my birthday, but I don't even get to do anything with my friends anymore. So it's just, it's just the you know the tip of the iceberg of what's gonna be you know 25 and more for me. I think. <laughs> Oh man, you'll be fine. You'll be fine, Josh. If if it comes to it, I just, just I'm just it. crying in the corner on my Twitch streams. Yeah. So I'll just be over there, like, oh, I'm old. Like, I'm just, I, I, I'm, I'm. It is weird though. Like, I'm like, oh god, I'm actually starting to plan out things in my life that I'd never care about three or four years ago. Like three or four years ago, I was like, when can I get drunk next? And now it's just like, uh, why? Everything. Put it this way, mate. I the hangovers got so bad for me. I I, I haven't had a drink in two years. Um, oh no! I stopped drinking because I, I couldn't deal with the hangovers anymore. I'm I, I get sick when I drink anyway. That's been the last year of my life. Is I have a drink, I instantly just get sick. So I'm like, oh great, that's the end of that. That's the end of that chapter and all of that kind of stuff. But everybody that's younger than me listening to this, pre just hold on to your early twenties and stuff like that, because it's just a carefree time. I noticed yes. that with, it's just very carefree. You can kind of just, you know, run wild and, and do what you need to do, live your life because I mean, I'm not old and I'm still in my, I'm going into my mid twenties, but I'm like, I can sense it. It's, it's Believe not me, there still, yet, but I can sense it. You still it. don't know what you're doing when you get to your early thirties, if that helps. People say um, that. People are like, you don't really know what you're doing until you're like 40 plus. Like that's yeah, when you can start I have actually no having head screwed on. I, I have no idea. I'm just kind of starting to think about buying the house I'm in. Um, mm. Just only that just starting me. to get what my, my big goal. Oh, you know, that like, scares me. That scares me. I'm getting ready to move in a few months. I'm moving closer into the city of Adelaide. And I'm like, I've always been out in the country. I've never been a city boy. And it's like, mm. it's just time to get away. I want to get away from This sounds really weird, everybody, but... I want to get away from my family, not because I dislike them, because I don't want that security blanket anymore. I actually want to like think for myself and, and do independent. Things. Yeah, I just want to be independent and like I want to fall over and be like, okay, can I actually get back up without you know my family around to pick me up? I want to. I'm. I, I yeah. I'm kind of. Need to know think, that. I'm I, aging. I get that. You need to know. I'm aging, yeah. everybody. I'm, I'm. 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 It's weird. It's. It's look look at our boy, he's growing up right before oh our eyes. Oh god. I was so it's like so weird when I started content creating, I was 22. I was like half like just I just yeah, I just turned 22 when I originally started, you know, planning content creating. Um, and it's like 22 and nearly 25, even I feel it's so different. I'm like, I've grown yeah. up so much and it's so weird. I've grown a beard. I never thought I'd grow a beard. I'm like, I'll never have facial hair. Why would you want to do that? And then you grow a beard and you're like, this is the greatest thing ever. Um, right. And it's like <laughs> your values and your moral, morals, we're full circling this whole chat and go back to morals. Of course, it wouldn't be an episode of this without my little girl coming in here. So, um, oh, oh. so we'll, it will end on this note, everybody. If she hates my guts. She, oh. she hates me so much. Look I love animals. Oh. I know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Giddy's little socks. She's got her little <laughs> socks. She always has to come in when I'm, I'm, I'm streaming and, oh, or something like that. She's, she usually sits right there when I play games on Twitch and she just sits oh. with me all night. But that's my little lady. That's my, my, that's my, that's my love. Um, but um, I love I love animals. Are you a, are you a dog person or are you a cat person? A cat person. Yeah, hey, I knew we'd be best friends. See, everyone Massive. always says dogs. Dude, my, always, my I love dogs. Don't get me wrong. Is. Don't get me wrong, everybody. I don't hate dogs. Dogs are great. <laughs> no, I don't hate dogs. I have a dog downstairs, but yes, I'm a cat person. <laughs> I love cats. They're just so independent creatures, and they do. Yes. Uh, they. I will say, everyone thinks cats are just these awful creatures that want to harm you, and yes, they do scratch. They do bite. But they're very loyal animals. They are very loyal animals. When I get home from work, Giddy's like, fuck yeah. And then she's like, feed me and I'm going to go do my own thing. That's what I yeah, like they, about cats. They're not so needy that they'll, mm -hmm. they'll, they need your attention all the time. They're like, look, mm -hmm. I'll get what I need from you. Then I'm going to fuck off for a bit. Yeah. And I'll let you do you. 
I'm like, yes. all right, that's, that's all right. She comes Thank in, you. makes sure I'm all right. Like gives me a little like that comes up, little love, and then goes back and goes and sits in the front window. Or that's something all I need. Lives. Yeah, comes that's and sleeps with me when I go to bed. I always wake up and she's on the bed. But other than that, she wants she just wants to live her life, go sleep in a corner somewhere. She's happy. That's why oh, I like yeah, cats. cats. Yeah. Yeah. See, team cats. That's one for cats. I've had many interviews over the well, many chats over the last few days, and everyone's just like. Dogs, dogs, dogs. Dogs are great. Yeah, it's always I love dogs. dogs. But cats, man. Cats, cats, man. Cats. So on that note, we'll, we'll kind of end it here. Um, I'll talk to you guys in the outro. But, dude, it's been finally, after all this time, it's been great. And um, we will. I'm sure we'll do a round two at some we'll point. We'll do it again, much. man. Thank you so much for having me. I'm absolutely yeah. pleasure to be on the show so early on. Um, I can't wait to see it when it goes up. Um, yes. So... <laughs> yeah man i'll definitely come back on just let me know and we'll talk some more crap I, i've enjoyed talking it is that that's what this is the show has gone so i just i've love i'm loving doing this because it's just conversations and that's what you, i'm good you, at talking you're the right man for the job josh you, mm. you're very good at you're very welcoming you're very good at keeping conversation going and yeah. i love the concept for the show um don't plan anything just see where it goes if it yeah. works it works if it doesn't you'd have to release it um, but wow. yeah, I love the idea for the show, man. So I'll, I'll probably check out the one that you've released today at the time yes. of recording. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, keep it up, man. Great work. Thank you very much, dude. And um, thank you for coming on. Um, and I'll talk to you guys in the outro in a minute, but um, round of applause. Round of applause. I'm sure everyone is just kind of giving their applause to you right now. But thank you very much, dude. Well, wasn't that a fun chat? Wasn't that just a super dope chat to have with Callum? Just a, a stand-up dude who I've never had the opportunity to have that kind of conversation with. We've talked on Twitter for years, but we just never, our times and just nothing had ever lined up. So I was really happy to have Callum on here. Make sure you go and give Super Kicks a follow. Make sure you go and give a Ringsiders Wrestling a follow as well as his own accounts. All his kind of description, all his links are in the description below. Um, all that love. What a, what a great chat. What a great episode. Um, and we're just going to kind of keep it moving next week and the week after and just continue on. Um, I will say that, um, I do have a lot of guests and a lot of episodes already recorded. So, um, some episodes may seem a little bit time stamped in some cases, but it's just how it's going to be. Not only that, um, coming up to Christmas, there is going to be, um, a week or two where episodes don't come out. I'll let you know on Twitter. Um, but it's just kind of the standard formula, I guess, that I take with, um, podcasting and everything like that. It, it's pretty, it's just how it is for Christmas. So other than that, I hope everyone is having a, a lovely day. Um, stay safe, stay educated on everything and just kind of take in the world. I know the world is a pretty weird place at the moment. So um, just kind of take it in as you can. All of my links again are in the description box below. I'll see you next week here on Are We Recording Yet? Peace out, everyone. Peace out, everyone.